I really want to thank again the wonderful first lecture and the two great speakers, uh, the three, the four, <laughs> I'm looking at Colin. Uh, I think it was a wonderful background and um, it was really fascinating. And the only conclusion that I didn't want to say before um, lunch so you can eat, and uh, I thought you are eager to eat after the microbiome, is, uh, is that, um, you know, we had so many opportunities to, collab to collaboration, to create collaboration between the people which are here and, uh, you know, the ideas that we have. We can use this area to verify and to do further um, uh, experiments and understandings. And also, we have a big group here of people from AI and analysis and so on that will be happy to analyze and join forces. And this is the reason why the, this institute is here, to benefit from the area like both of you mentioned and to go one step further. So I thank you very much. And now I want to invite uh, Leora Ron, Professor Leora Ron for the next session. She is not only one, uh, and she has, you saw in the CV, the president of and a very rewarded uh, researchers in microbiome. She, is, she was also my great support in this very special meeting. So thank you, Leora. Well, thank you, Mira. And I really want to, to start this session by thanking Mira for organizing this because clearly Without her, <clears throat> that would not have happened. And she was pushing and pulling, and uh, the, the results are here, and they are very good. And of course, I also want to thank the, the people from Tel Aviv University and the Porter uh, Foundation for supporting us. Um, I should have prepared uh, an introduction about microbiomes, but clearly I don't have to because uh, we invited the introduction and I think that after this very uh, extensive and talk of George, uh, we can just go on to the first speaker. The first speaker is uh, Nurit Harel. She's from Tel Aviv University. She's doing her PhD in the Porter School of Environment, and she will talk about skin microbiome. Hi, and thank you for inviting me, and special thank you to Eliora that you gave me the honor to speak here today. Uh, my research actually take advantage about the Israeli climate and Israeli population, and you will see it coming uh, in the next few slides. Just a small background, our skin microbiome is the first interface be between us and the environment, and it is influenced by many, many of endogenous factor and exogenous factor. When I'm talking endogenous, it's what is inside us, like the skin temperature, humidity, sebum secretion, skin texture, hormones, antibiotics that we are taking some time, age, and so on. And also the area of the skin has different microbiome. If we will go into our hands or our cheek, we'll see completely different species growing up there. And of course, the exogenous uh, uh, factors, which are very important here in the Dead Sea, which include the environment, the sun radiation, humidity, temperature, uh, animal contact, someone mentioned before, the dogs that we are <laughs> sometimes growing, so they influence our skin microbiome, and so on. So this is a study done in 2009 already. They took samples from different bo body parts uh, of about 12 subjects, about 27 sub, uh, samples that collected. And if we are looking here, we see that the oral cavity microbiome and the gut microbiome are quite accumulated together and are to, um, almost the same between the sub different subjects. But if we are looking on the skin microbiome, which is over here, or the earwax as well, we see that it's 
completely spread over the graph. So there are big differences between the subject and the skin microbiome that we are seeing. In the last uh, few, few years, the gut microbiome was extensively studied and they started to even treat people, as we heard in the le lecture before me, with PUC and all of that. But the skin microbiome is still quite new research and we are still mapping what is there and what is not there and start the understanding of what they are doing. So some few studies that were published, then there are many, many more, making the connection between our skin microbiome and our skin health, skin fu function, stem cell maturation, and so on. So understandably, we must take in importance our skin microbiome and our, our skin functions. So the, this is one part of my uh, background. The second one is the sun radiation. As we all know, and as I mentioned, the skin is the most, uh, the organ which is in, intact with the environment function, and the sun radiation is coming from the UVC range that come from the sun till the infrared, different wavelengths. I will not go into all the details. We can take two seminars about it. But each wavelength have different chromophore, different chemical that can ab absorb the energy of that uh, wavelength and make different changes in our uh, biology. Some of them are directed to the DNA, absorbed directly by the DNA, like the UVB band, and some of them are uh, performing free radicals, some of them are uh, penetrating to the mitochondria, and so on. And they are damaged in many, many mechanisms. The skin, and we have DNA damage, cell damage, direct, indirect, and, and many other damages. And of course, our body, during evolution, develop multiple uh, protection mechanisms against this harmful uh, radiation, starting from our, our hair, our pigmentation, which we become darker during the summer, we are producing melanin, the stratum corneum, DNA repair, many, many, many <coughs> excuse me, mechanisms like double stranded, single stranded DNA repair, and many others. So, understanding that we have a various mechanisms of damage from the sun radiation, and various of mechanisms of repair and protecting us, now we we discovered that there is another organ that, as we can say, all our microbiome, which is evolute, evolute together with us. So what is the role of this micro, uh, the question of our study is what is the role in this, of this microbiome in protection from the sun radiation? It might be a processes that will protect the microbiome itself, the bacteria, fungi, viruses, etc or it might be some interaction with our body that will protect us from the sun. Might be like little umbrella, maybe pigmentation, but might be something that will induce uh, oxidate, uh, oxidative uh, repair, immune system, other, we don't know yet. So the first stage in our study was first of all to find which are this, uh, in this whole thousands of microbes and uh, bacteria and fungi and so on, which are, res are responding to the sun radiation. And maybe if we are exposed for a long term to the sun radiation, maybe they evolve differently, the population evolve differently than people which are protected through all the years. So, the <laughs> thank you very much. So the first, as I said, the sun radiation is important. The, I missed to say the hologenome concept, of course, that we are one uh, super organism which are connected together. We have endogenous mechanism repair. And the question is about the microbiome, which is that I just said. So I'll go directly to the study population. And that's what I said. We took advantage about the Israeli population. We took three groups already done, one is to be done next year. The first one is lifeguard. Lifeguard on the Mediterranean beach. We took samples from them. The second one is the ultra-Orthodox people from Nebak. They are going covered, long live, even in, the, even in the winter. And the third one, which will be done next, this year actually, in the next few months, is Dead Sea population. 
And the design was like this. We took swab, which is superficial sample, just to know that there was now a study which compared the microbiome uh, detected from superficial samples and swabs and punch biopsy, and they are quite dissimilar, so we are feeling very, even now I'm feeling better after it was published, that we are taking only swabs and not a punch biopsy from three different places. One was on the cheek, which is exposed in both groups to the sun, one from the inner arm and one from the outer arm. From other uh, protection mechanism, like the melanin production, the color, the tanning that we are getting, we know that the inner arm act differently than the outer arm. It will be also the same if you look for cancers or other things of the skin. There is a huge difference between the exposure to the sun radiation. We took it at May, which is before the summer season, and then in September, after the summer season, and we compared the microbiome. Each one was the control of itself, and also we compare between the groups. Then we did, and I'm not going to go into detail, but for me it was very uh, challenging to do all of that, actually. We took the sample, we produced the DNA, we used 16S RNA, DNA, and uh, we clean, and then we did the metagenomics. Of course, always we have quality control on the way, and so. So let's go for the initial results. First of all, we did live count, it, it's not uh, metagenomics, we actually count how many uh, colonies are growing after the sample. And what is interesting, we think that, in, it's, just uh, pay attention, it's a logarithmic scale, so it's a bit, uh, could, might be a bit confusing. So in the cheek, we don't see a huge difference. In the inner arm, in the religious people, in the ultra-orthodox, there was higher number of a count after the summer and in the lifeguard less. But what was more interesting is the outer arm, the outside of the arm, which in the lifeguard we, we found after the summer. Less microbes, less, less count. In the ultra orthodox we had higher counts. Probably due to humidity, which was under the sh uh, leaves of their shelf or something like that. Then we did a to a comparison, one was called, you will see it in a, in a minute. Maybe I will show you the result and explain. No, we'll go back. Sorry. A, a comparison about the population and two options to compare the population. We can, can compare the population, taking including the number of, spe of species and the abundance one. So the one which will be more abundant, the one which are in high quantity in the population, will take the uh, result to one side. And the other option is to ignore how much of them are in the population. Let's say if we have 10,000 red and one yellow, we'll get the number two in this option, in the Jacquard option. So it doesn't take into account the abundance of the population. And it's important because when you compare it with the ultra-orthodox, actually in both comparison, we didn't see any major difference before or after the, su the summer. But when we go in another way, we can see it, it's completely overlapped. The distance between the dot means how much they are uh, similar to one or each other. It is a sim similarity curve. So we see that they are quite the same. But when we are going to the lifeguard, that was, uh, for me at least, surprising. When we look about the abundance of the population also and the type of species, there was no difference. But wh when we look only about, in the Jacquard, only about the species, we saw differences. And why is that important? Because the species which are less ab abundant in the population raise after the summer. So for me, maybe I'm a... Uh, like the food, we are eating everything, we, uh, but some vitamins are vital for our survival. So maybe these little species, which are low abundance, are important for the vitality of the whole popula population, maybe the whole the ecosystem in our uh, body. Marish? Marish? Okay. Maybe like this. So, so again, can you hear me? In the back? Thank you. So uh, again, sorry, okay. 
So it's again another presentation of the same result that we can see when we look abundance in conclusion, there is no difference, but we only uh, just take the type of microbiome that we have, there is a big difference. And now we have to start out of list of hundreds of microbiome to find which one is the one that we are looking for. So we did some left cell analysis, which I'm not going to explain what it is, but you see the blue one is the one which were more popular in the ultra-orthodox, and the green one, the one which were more popular in the lifeguard. And we got a long list of micro microbes that we have to look which one is in, might be interesting to photoprotection, to protection from sun radiation. And then we go one by one. Uh, many of them were from the plants of the ocean. Some of them were from the marine water. So probably maybe the lifeguard didn't took a good shower before our sampling. They are not very interesting to us. But, we, and this is just a sample, we have a list which are part of the human microbiome. And then we start to learn them one by one. And I can show you if anyone is interested in all the list and all the details later on, outside of this lecture, of course. And we find some of them which might have interesting a uh, property or metabolite that can protect us from the sun radiation. Just because of uh, the time, anyone which is interesting in more detail, I will be happy to tell you in the break. Our next step, of course, is the additional metagenomic analysis. I just heard the lecture that it took us once, it took us uh, one year to get a result. When it take, now it takes us one year to an analyze the results. So I'm during this analyzing process, which is pretty long. We have the fungal community, community analysis as well. We are on the process of that. And the next step will be, of course, to take in the Dead Sea. We, are, we were waiting for a Helsinki approval, and now we are going on the coming May to, to repeat the study here on the Dead Sea, which with people which are more exposed and less exposed to the sun radiation, and we are expecting that it will be different than the people around the Mediterranean Sea because of all of the differences that were talked about so many times during this day about the oxygen level, the pressure, the UV radiation, the, uh, the salt in the water, and so on. So this is, these are my next step. I just want first to thank uh, Professor Eliora Ron and Uri Gofna that allow me to work in their lab and very patient with me and to Lea Reshef, Yael, and Dvora, which helped me all the way. Thank you. So a comment and a question. The comment is that uh, in the study done by Michael Brandwein here, <coughs> in people that passed or underwent climatotherapy were not showing, I mean normal, healthy people, did not show a difference before and after. So that's an interesting observation. The question is regarding lifeguards. And you know that one of the interesting findings is that melanoma does not, does not develop more in lifeguards. So the question is, can you connect or would you be looking at this issue when you look at, at specific bacteria, namely uh, uh, neoplastic transformation? So, uh, first of all, thank you for your question. For your first question, I just learned here in the break that I must do also gene expression. It might be the same uh, microbiome, but different gene expression. So that may answer, and I'm not sure I'll be able to do all of that because there are more and more questions. Regarding the melanoma, it's a very good question. At the beginning, we thought to begin with the study which studied the microbiome around the melanoma uh, lesion against healthy area in the same individual. I'm not sure I can do it in the same study, but I'm sure it should be done and it will be done in the future. I have a question. This morning we heard about fecal transplants. And I'm wondering if there's a, a possibility that you could imagine doing sort of a skin microbial transplant, and B, are you thinking about a probiotic lotion? So rather than washing our skin and putting oils on our skin, maybe we should be probiotically infecting our microbiome. 
So th this question, uh, I think the skin microbiome research is uh, 10 years behind the gut microbiome. Uh, research. So it will be there for sure, but I can share with you, I just coming back from the American Academy of Dermatology meeting, and one of the company developed her prebiotic uh, cream, which she said that the uh, microbiome digested into lactic acid, which lowered the pH, which influenced uh, atopic dermatitis and so on. So this is exactly the direction the field is going to.